Every day, thousands have surgery requiring anesthesia. Anesthesia allows for safety and comfort during surgical procedures. Like surgeons, anesthesiologists are physicians with specialized training. Anesthesiologists plan for your anesthetic based on your medical history and schedule procedure. They concentrate on your well-being while the surgeon performs the operation. Physicians specializing in anesthesiology may work with other members of the anesthesia team, including physicians training to become anesthesiologists, nurse anesthetists, or anesthesiologist assistants. Anesthesiologists attend to your medical needs during surgery and oversee your care and recovery from the anesthetic. Anesthesiologists are also assisted by specialized nurses who care for you before and after surgery. This program explains how different types of anesthesia are delivered and how you can prepare yourself for this experience. There are three basic types of anesthesia, general, regional, and local. General anesthesia provides a state of controlled unconsciousness during which there is no pain or awareness. This allows you to be still during the procedure and lets the surgeon operate under the best conditions. Regional nerve blocks can be used instead of general anesthesia to numb part of the body, such as an arm, leg, or the entire lower half of your body. With these kinds of anesthetics, you may be awake during the surgery, but you will feel no pain and may also be given medications to help you relax. Local anesthesia may be used for minor limited procedures, such as a small skin biopsy. Preparation for your particular anesthetic begins before surgery. You may be asked to fill out a questionnaire about your health and previous anesthetics. You will also be asked to tell us about any prescription, over-the-counter or herbal medications you are taking. Some medications may need to be discontinued several days before surgery due to their potential to interfere with anesthetics or cause unexpected bleeding. The anesthesiologist will discuss your smoking and drinking habits as well as the importance of you refraining from these habits before surgery. The information you provide helps the anesthesiologist determine the best anesthetic management for your safety and comfort. Before your procedure, you may visit the preoperative clinic to be evaluated and have several tests. You will also be told when to arrive for surgery and what to bring with you. You will be reminded to make arrangements to have a responsible adult drive you home after your procedure. In preparation for your surgery, you will receive specific instructions from your doctor or nurse, including the need to avoid food and drink. It's very important for patients to understand that if they eat or drink too close to the scheduled time of the procedure, we might have to delay the operation or even cancel it. And we do this to minimize the possibility of the patients aspirating their gastric contents. When you get to the hospital or outpatient surgery center, the staff will help you with the registration process and place an identification bracelet on you. Once registered, you will be asked to change into a hospital gown. The nurse will ask you a few questions to verify information about your medical history and medications, as well as confirm that you have not had any food or drink in the hours before surgery. You may also be asked to remove your jewelry, including any piercings. The nurse will then take your pulse rate, blood pressure, and temperature. The anesthesiologist will review your medical records and will ask you many of the questions you've already answered. Then, the anesthesiologist will do a physical exam. Your anesthesiologist will discuss your recommended type of anesthesia, including the risks, benefits, and alternatives. A variety of factors influence your anesthesiologist's choice of anesthetic. As physicians, our priority is to keep patients safe during surgical procedures, and patients should not be embarrassed to ask any questions or express any concerns to their anesthesiologists. Before you go into the operating room, an intravenous line will be started. The intravenous line allows the doctor to give you fluids and medications before, during, and after surgery. When it's time for your procedure breathe, to yeah. begin, the anesthesiologist breathe, may yeah. ask you to breathe in oxygen through a mask. He or she will then give you medications through the IV line to sedate you. After a patient is anesthetized, we might insert a device similar to this one that I have in my hands in the patient's oral cavity or a different device in the patient's trachea to allow for 
the administration of anesthetic gases, and also for controlling the ventilation, the respiration of the patient. Sometimes patients experience a sore throat after the administration of anesthesia, and that's due to a combination of factors, including dry gases, the plastic in the patient's throat, and the manipulation of the airway by the anesthesiologist. Generally, this is a temporary discomfort and goes away fairly soon. During anesthesia, many vital functions such as your heart rate, blood pressure, and the amount of oxygen in your blood will be closely monitored. Physician anesthesiologists train extensively to be prepared to address any problems that might arise during surgery. After the operation, the breathing tube will be removed and you will be taken to the post-anesthesia care unit, commonly known as the PACU. This is where patients recover from anesthesia under close observation and may last from minutes to hours depending on each patient's needs. Your anesthesiologist will inform the nurse of your condition and then he or she will monitor your recovery, treating any pain and ensuring the stability of your vital signs. You must be completely alert and in some cases able to drink fluids and urinate before leaving the post-anesthesia care unit. Before leaving, the nurse may give you instructions for your rest and care and answer any questions you may have. Once home, a nurse may call within a day or two to check on your recovery. If you need to stay hospitalized following surgery, you will be transferred to your room where you will continue to receive care. We hope we have answered many of your questions about anesthesia, but be sure to ask your anesthesiologist any questions you may still have. Although anesthesia, like all medical procedures, has risks and benefits, it is as safe today as it has ever been.